Hey guys, it's Max. It's a very exciting morning today because Blackmagic finally released their Blackmagic RAW for the Pocket 4K camera. Now, this was announced quite a while ago. They released it for the Ursa Mini Pro, and we've been waiting and waiting uh, for this little beast of a setup right here. I got it all rigged up, and I'll talk about kind of my setup in my full review. I've been kind of waiting for some of these updates. The last update fixed a bunch of things, which was awesome, but I wanted to wait for Blackmagic Raw, and now we have it. So uh, let me tell you a little bit about it. It is on their website, and you guys can download it, and then I'm gonna go out, shoot some footage, show that off to you guys. I'm gonna leave a link in the description where you guys can download it if you wanna play with it yourself. Um, and then I wanna just compare it to the Cinema DNG that we had before and kinda give you guys the benefits of not only having the smaller file size and the smarter codecs and being able to play back the footage on your computer instead of seeing still images, but also the processing power. With previous raw codecs, especially the Cinema DNG, that's very CPU intensive. This new one also will use your graphics card. So if you're editing on a laptop like I am, you should be able to edit Blackmagic RAW much easier than the previous RAW, save a bunch of file size, and have a lot more flexibility. So it's a great update. Let's get the sucker installed, and then we'll go out and shoot. All right guys, so I went out to my favorite coffee shop with my family. I just did handheld Sigma 18 or 35, so no stabilization. That's where there might be some camera shake, but I tried to shoot in 4K 60 Black Magic Raw. That was all 12 to one. If you guys enjoyed that little montage, please hit that like button and right next to it, there's a subscribe button as well. Of course, I haven't seen it yet. It's all on this SSD. So I mentioned the file sizes. That's one of the benefits with uh, Black Magic Raw, and with a one terabyte SSD like this, a link in the description, very inexpensive. With 12 to one, you can shoot for 12 hours on one of these SSDs. So let's take a look at how these files react in Finder. Uh, I am using my screen recording, so I'm using about uh, eight, 10 percent of the CPU, and I'm plugging in the SSD. If I use Quick Look with Mac, you'll see that automatically I get this pop-up of the thumbnail. So compared to Cinema DNG Compress, where you don't know what the clips are, you actually can see. And not only that, we actually see the resolution and the frame rate above, and it pops up with next to the the file name. And here we get a little open Black Magic RAW. I'm playing back 4K 60 here, RAW. Um, while I'm also screen recording, and my CPU usage is only 39%, 38% right there, uh, without any issues on a laptop. So this is a six core model. Uh, that is that is nice. So this is the, this is the future of RAW. No more having to plug it into your software and having you you know to do proxies um, or maxing out your CPU. 4K 60 RAW. 40% CPU usage, 38%, including screen recording at the same time. And let's open up a 4K24 clip right here of my son. So playing this back, our CPU usage is at 22%, 21%, 22%, and that's while I'm screen recording. So I opened up the latest version of DaVinci Resolve. Here I have a four to one Cinema DNG. I have a ProRes 422HQ, which is about the same size as four to one, maybe actually slightly larger, but without the raw benefits. Uh, and then I have the Black Magic Raw, all 24 frames per second. The Black Magic Raw is 12 to one. That's smaller file size than even the GH5's 400 megabit per second, and it's 12 bit raw. So let's take a look at the CPU usage. So I am screen recording, that does affect it a bit, but playing back the Cinema DNG 4 to one, we're looking at about 41 uh, actual percentage of CPU usage, 31 right there, I dropped down a little bit, 32. 
And of course, this is 24. If it's 60, it's gonna be higher. Here's uh, ProRes, 28 CPU usage, 31% CPU usage. Uh, and then we're going to the Blackmagic Roth. And we're looking at 21%, 15%. So it's playing back easier than ProRes RAW while being a third of the file size or smaller um, and still maintaining the RAW capabilities. So that is really nice. I'm screen recording, which you shouldn't screen record while doing this, but look how smooth the timeline is. Uh, there's basically no lag. So let's go over to the color tab. And of course with the Cinema DNG, we have the capabilities to change our decoding quality, which I have it to full res. You can change your ISO. Of course, if we move over to our uh, ProRes clip, all of that is missing, even though the file size is just as large. Go to Black Magic Raw, bam, we still have all those capabilities and you can adjust your ISO. Black Magic did a really good thing. Hopefully it's gonna be uh, more widespread than for example, ProRes Raw, which is just in Final Cut for now. Um, and of course we have the capability of changing the ISOs in other settings. So let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. I will say that if you upgrade and you get the Blackmagic RAW, um, you do lose the Cinema DNG. So they got rid of that. Uh, their CEO said that there is some issues with licensing. So that was a big part why they got rid of it. But also the, the Blackmagic RAW is a lot more capable. It's more flexible and it has smaller um, file sizes while retaining the same quality. So personally, I'm gonna be shooting a lot with maybe like eight to one or the 12 to one, but along with that, they also have uh, the, instead of constant bit rates, they have variable. So that's another great option where if you need a lot of bit rate, more bit rate for the senior shooting, it'll raise up to like say 50 in one of the settings, but then drop down to about 20 megabytes a second when you don't need that. So that is another great option. I think I'll be exploring that as well. I've been holding off to do my full review of this camera now that we have some nice firmware updates and fixes for some of the biggest downsides that I had with the camera and now that Blackmagic RAW is out, I'll have to be wrapping up my review and putting that out. So if you guys wanna see that, make sure you guys are subscribed and have those notifications enabled. Of course, I, I cut down on my rig to go and shoot handheld, but I'll have some parts in the description as well for the rig you guys saw at the beginning. Thank you guys for watching. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next video.